What's up guys, Ibra here with Hardware Connects, and after years of waiting, finally AMD decided to launch the Ryzen 7 just a few weeks ago, and we were pleasantly surprised by what it had to offer. Uh, the 1800X, the 1700X, and the 1700 each had their own combination of excellent pricing and very good all-around performance. Uh, it actually competed really well against Intel's Broadwell E and higher-end Kaby Lake CPUs. What's also interesting about the Ryzen 7 CPU is that it featured 16 processing threads and it only costs uh, $330. While that's not expensive when compared against Intel's ridiculously priced Broadwell E, what about people who don't need all that processing power on tap? Well guys, meet Ryzen 5 because not only are these processors really affordable even compared to Ryzen 7, but uh, I think that many users might find this a lot more appealing than Ryzen 7. So stick around for a lot more juicy details right after this. You can only rely on the pro to do the job, with every keystroke satisfying like the millions before it. Quality feel with every key, regardless of your space. Cooler Master Master Keys Pro, take it with you, make it yours. So what is AMD trying to accomplish with Ryzen 5? That's actually a pretty broad question since they are meant to offer competition against Intel's Kaby Lake CPUs in a variety of different markets and price points. Like all of AMD's other Ryzen launches, the idea here is to provide buyers with more processing power and higher performance metrics uh, compared to what Intel does and still offers it at a very low price point. Uh, in addition, uh, when you compare it to something like Intel's lower end CPUs or lower end Kaby Lake CPUs like the i5-7500 or the i5-7400, uh, uh, these new AMD processors come unlocked. So overclocking is available, which is pretty awesome. Even though Ryzen 5 processors are officially launching and will be available today, we have a full explained video and you can watch it right here to get acquainted with, but let's have a little refresher. I'll be only reviewing the 1600X and the 1500X right now, but there are still other processors in this lineup that will eventually round things out. So at the top of AMD's Ryzen 5 stack is the 1600X, and you know what? This is the super interesting 6-core 12-thread processor at only $250. The number of threads is certainly important, but the high clock speed is what may help it compete with the much more expensive Ryzen 7 1800X in games that don't take advantage of all the 16 threads. It also happens to be the same price as the i5-7600K, so that should be an interesting matchup. The 1500X is really meant to be a direct competitor against the i5-7500 and 7400 CPUs with the same number of threads as a 7700K. Honestly though, for under $200, this seems like an awesome deal. It looks like AMD ensured its operational speeds uh, to remain a bit lower so it won't take market shares away from higher-end Ryzen processors. Finally, rounding things up are the two CPUs I won't be reviewing in this video, the Ryzen 5 1600 and 1400. While the 1600 is simply a slower version of the 1600X, AMD's 1400 uses a very different layout since along with cutoff cores, it also has less L3 cache. With the focus of these processors being value, the 1600 and 1500X ship with this, the Wraith Spire Cooler. It does not come with a ring of RGB LEDs as that's only reserved for the Ryzen 7 lineup, but it should get the job done on these lower wattage SKUs. Meanwhile, the 1600X won't come with a cooler at all. Back when I looked at Ryzen 7 processors, I mentioned that the new X370 motherboards would provide an amazing platform to build a system. But what happens if you don't need everything those board offers? That's where the B350 motherboards come into the equation since they still offer overclocking on all Ryzen processors, having all the connectors most system builders would want and cost much less than X370. As a matter of fact, a motherboard like this Asus B350 Plus is a perfect fit for lower priced Ryzen 5 processors since it only costs around $115. The idea behind the B350 chipset is that it's used to create a basic, low-priced motherboard uh, but still maintains all the features that people need. For example, this Asus Plus Prime B350 features NVMe 4X M.2 slot, two native USB 3.1 Gen 2 back panel connectors, and six SATA 6 gigabytes per second ports. I should also mention that Crossfire is supported too, but when two cards are installed, the second slot will only run at 4X mode. Also, if additional add-in boards are put into any of the other 1X slots, Crossfire will completely be disabled. 
Basically, the B350 boards are meant for the majority of people out there who want a single powerful graphics card like this RX 480, a primary fast M.2 SSD, and some higher capacity hard drive storage. That's exactly what buyers of Ryzen 5 and the upcoming Ryzen 3 CPUs will be looking for. All right, with all that out of the way, let's connect everything up and run some benchmarks. Remember, for all the testing, we disable the Windows High Precision Event Tuner and enable the High Performance Power Mode. So are you guys ready for this? Bam. Synthetic benchmarks show that both the 1600X and 1500X provide some excellent results. In multi-core testing in Cinebench, PCMark, and W-Prime, uh, the 1600X's 12 threads really allow it to occupy an interesting space within the market since it costs less than the Intel i7 7700K, but it continually remains out front. The same can be said about the 1500X against the 7600K, since the additional threads on the AMD CPU can be really beneficial in these scenarios. The only exception for both processors is PC Mark, which seems to love the higher frequencies Intel processors can reach. Moving on to single core testing, and we can see that this is an area where the lower clocked Ryzen processors suffer against Intel's newest KB Lake architecture. Even though the 1600X's XFR rate goes to 4.1 GHz and the 1500X's will hit 3.9 GHz in single threaded situations, they can't match the 7700K's 4.5 GHz and the 7600K's 4.2 GHz. They do however compete quite well, especially against Ryzen 7 processors. So synthetic benchmarks are great, but they don't really mean all that much. Moving on to real-world benchmarks, and it's obvious that given the price of these two new Ryzen 5 processors, they are pretty good performers. However, if you look at the results a bit closer, there are a few more concerning things going on behind the scenes. Comparing apples to apples shows the Ryzen 5 1500X has the same 4-core, 8-thread layout as the 7700K. The Intel's processor runs all over it in 7-zip, Blender, and Corona. That KBLA chip also performs very close to the 6-core, 12-thread 1600X2. Moving on to GIMP, and the results continue very much the same, with the two Ryzen 5 processors providing some very good results relative to their pricing against Intel's competitors. The same goes for Handbrake. Remember, the Ryzen 5 costs about as much as the i5-7500 in these charts. Since WinRAR uses numerous other components within the system rather than stressing just the processor, you can see that the results are pretty consistent across all the CPUs I'm benchmarking. However, I'm going to pause it on Adobe Premiere here for a second since this is a program I use on a daily basis. Looking at the results shows that the Ryzen 5 1600X with its higher clock speeds is a much better purchase for this program than the more expensive Ryzen 7 1700X or the 1700. Yes, the 7700K beats it by a few seconds, but we can't forget that the processor costs $100 more. The same can be said about the 1500X. It provides really good performance here relative to its price, particularly when you compare it against the 7600K. So guys, this has been a moment you've been waiting for gaming. First up is 3D Mark, and wow, these are some really surprising results for the Firestrike benchmark. It looks like there are some efficiencies when moving from an 8-core design to a 6-core layout. What I noticed is that throughout the Firestrike benchmark, the 1600X remained at a higher clock rate than the 1800X, and since Firestrike outputs is highly dependent on dual and single-core speeds, we get something like this. The same can be said for the 1500X. It offers really good performance per dollar. Unlike Firestrike, we can see that the DX12 benchmark TimeSpy is a highly multi-threaded program, and as a result, the 1600X and 1500X still perform well, but their frequencies count for a bit less. In actual games like Battlefield 1, the Intel processors still maintain a lead, but it isn't a commanding one. One thing that really impressed me was how much value the Ryzen 5 1600X and 1500X brings to the table, especially against the Ryzen 7 processors. Since games don't really require more than 4 or a maximum of 8 current current threads for optimal performance, these low price CPUs are really able to shine. The same can be said about Deuce X results, it really is hard to justify spending more than $250 on a processor. Both Overwatch and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare are good examples of a recent trend in some PC games. Rather than being limited by a component, the game engine themselves have an internal frame rate limiter. This is done to avoid uncorrected rendering errors, but it also means that the differences between a $1500 processor and Ryzen 5 CPUs are minimal at most. Doom is another one of those limited games, so there really isn't much to see with it. 
I do want to mention that this chart would change quite a bit if we're using a slower graphics card. On the other hand, Grand Theft Auto is one of many DX11 games that seem to like high clock speeds over core counts. That means the AMD processors really struggle to keep up with Intel's offerings. Even the i5-7500 comes close to the 1600X in this case. So that's it for gaming results, but what about power consumption? We already knew that Ryzen processors were some of the most efficient around and these results prove that. Remember, both the 1600X and 1500X are based upon a dual CCX 8-core design but have cores disabled. Typically, that wouldn't mean higher power consumption for lower-end parts, but that didn't happen here. Instead, the 1500X actually consumes less power than the 7700K. Meanwhile, the 1600X's higher frequencies and 6-core design means it consumes almost as much as the 1700X, but that is still quite efficient. The performance per watt ratio against KB Lake processors isn't quite up to the level of Ryzen 5 versus older Broadwell eCPUs, but Ryzen 5 remains competitive at least. As for overclocking, there were some successes and failures. Both processors overclocked to just over 4 GHz, but hit a wall below 4100 MHz on all cores. It seems like these chips on their motherboards have a hard limit that cut off chips power at a certain power consumption level. We've talked to various contacts as this seems to be a fail safe that may be modified as AMD rolls out a new microcode for Ryzen processors, but only time will tell. Until then, 4 GHz is still a very good result and it boosts performance significantly on both chips. So guys, that's it for the Ryzen 5 1600X and 1500X. So I guess it's time to wrap things around with my thoughts about these two new processors. So let's start with the 1600X because of all the CPUs available on the market right now, I feel like this processor offers the best combinations of efficiency, price, and performance. Uh, because of its 12 thread design and higher clock speeds, this chip can be easily adapted towards various situations. Uh, if you're a content producer like me or someone who requires a lot of processing power, uh, the Ryzen 5 1600X can easily get the job done. This $250 processor can then turn around and provide excellent in-game frame rates, which can easily match an 1800X that costs twice as much. It does really well on a price to performance level against Intel's i5-7600K, even though that processor was a little bit better in gaming. The same can be said about the Ryzen 5 1500X. What a great little chip for people who are on a budget. It just costs $190 and competes very well against the i5-7500 in every benchmark. To be honest with you guys, going into this review, I was a little worried about how Ryzen 5 would compete against Intel's KB Lake CPUs. Um, remember, when Ryzen 7 came out ahead in many situations, it was compared against Intel's Broadwell E, uh, an architecture that's going on three years old now. But I think it's safe to say that the Ryzen 5 processors fared up pretty well since AMD was able to rely on their uh, higher threat count combined with highly aggressive pricing to come out on top. Honestly, <laughs> with Ryzen 5 right now, I think it's really hard to recommend Ryzen 7 for gaming because these processors are really good. I don't give out many awards these days, but I think in this case, the Ryzen 5 1600X stands out in a big way. That's why I'm gonna give it the damn good and damn good value awards. When paired up with a B350 motherboard, it will be a great foundation onto which you can build an amazing system. And I may have done exactly that, but you'll have to wait for that video a bit later this week. So what do you guys think? Would you rather rock a Ryzen 7 or Intel processor over Ryzen 5? Are you as convinced as I am uh, about these new Ryzen 5 processors? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm Ibar with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.